An ISIS-inspired bomber taking aim at New York City with a failed rush hour attack at one of America's busiest transportation hubs. A scene all too familiar around the world. So what can we learn from threats overseas to crush the danger here at home? Joining me now is former member of Israel's Special Operations Counter-Terrorist Unit, Aaron Cohen. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, Heather. So I was looking at these headlines as they continued to cross the, the news wire, cross social media yesterday. Attempted suicide bomber in New York City. What were your initial thoughts? I'm not surprised. You know, we're, we, we just, how many, how many uh, 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 truck attacks have we seen in Europe since May? Uh, uh, over a half a dozen. We just had another truck weaponized and used uh, uh, in, that, in that park in lower Manhattan uh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Six this this weeks isn't ago. even news. It's, it, yeah. Yeah, it just happened a month and a half ago. So we're, you know, we're, you know, I mean, we're 15 years after 9-11. Uh, we still have the TSA checking breast milk and making people take off their shoes. It's just time to get real about our security. And soft targets are the new uh, security threat. And soft targets, for those who don't understand what that means, means targets that um, don't have a lot or have very little security and are often attacked or targeted by terrorists or militant groups. So we need to put together... A soft target plan. I don't so feel like we have we one right now. So what can we possibly do, though, Aaron? I mean, it seems because the attacks run the gamut now. You mentioned the attack just six weeks ago that, that happened here on the West Side Highway where the terrorists used a truck to drive through people. And now we have this terrorist who strapped a bomb to himself and tried to blow himself up. Luckily, yeah, he wasn't able to follow through with it due in part to some very brave officers we're going to get to after we talk with you. Uh, but what can we possibly do? Well, it's a great question. The fact is, is that anyone, any idiot, can go put together a pipe, a pipe bomb that he can figure out how to do online, and he can walk into any crowded area like we saw here at this central bus station in, uh, in and around, I guess it was 46, 47th Street. Yeah. So what we have to do is we have to look at all of the soft targets as a collective and begin to look at all of the security resources. And my recommendation, if I was advising President Trump, would be the only measure that will effectively be able to combat terrorism is predictive behavioral profiling. It, it is the only technique that is used for all of Israel's mm -hmm. uh, uh, LL flights and for our national airport in Israel. And there's a reason cameras uh, technology, none of it can predict behavior. What we need to do is start tapping into the private security sector, start mm -hmm. getting ourselves out of this $12 an hour security guard, observe and report, mindset, Seth Rogen, if you yeah. know what I'm saying, Paul Blart, mall cop, and let's get these guys trained. It only takes a couple of weeks. But here's the catch, Heather. They need to be armed. If you're dealing with terrorism, it is a statistical fact in Israel that you have to meet a terrorist with an equal amount or more uh, over aggressive amount right. of force. Well, that makes sense. Somebody of comes course. at you with a bomb. Let, let me course. ask you Somebody this, comes uh, at you with a bomb, you have to respond with a weapon. You have to be able to retaliate. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you though, because this is going to come up throughout the day, this chain migration issue, where this individual was able to enter the country, due in part to an aunt that he had living here. So, in terms of chain migration. Migration. Will tougher immigration laws, if chain migration had not been allowed, would this have happened? No, it wouldn't have happened. And, and, and chain immigration needs to be squashed. Group family immigration needs to be squashed. Uh, and the fact is, is that intelligence gathering, which is really what the Americans are having to learn very, very quickly, and what we've learned in Israel, I mean, this is a 60-year process. We've been dealing with this with, the, with, with Hamas, with mm -hmm. the Hezbollah. This is an art form that takes years to, to get together. And as the Americans are figuring this out, and as they're going through what I call security puberty, all of these immigration laws to be completely restructured. Congress needs to lay off this president, and he needs to get tough with these countries that support terrorism, that harbor terrorism, that have anywhere close to a 15 right. to 20 percent to 25 percent uh, a belief that suicide bombing is acceptable, like your gasket last guest was talking about. Yeah, we need to basically put a choke point. Yeah. Well, it's incredible. You need to put a choke point on these countries. Yeah. All right. Well, Agreed. Aaron, you need thank to put you. a choke point on these countries so they can't get in. Thank you so much, Aaron. We appreciate it. That's going to be talked about a lot throughout the day, and we'll have you back to talk more about it, too. Thank you Take so care. much.